the Pennsylvania Lumber Museum up just west of Gilton on Route 6. It's um, controlled and run by the Pennsylvania Historic Commission and there's a number of buildings which uh, show the different um, ideas of forestry in Pennsylvania including a nice uh, um, section on the CCC, the Civilian yeah, as Conservation. You look at the Lumber Museum, you want to know where they got the lumber from? Well, let me show you. The mountains in Pennsylvania are, we should recognize that most of Pennsylvania is forest. We get outside of Media, Pennsylvania, and oh my goodness, there is so much forest and farmland. It's incredible. It's no wonder that agricultural is one of the top industries in Pennsylvania today. This building is the mess hall and bunkhouse, and uh, cook shanties and bunkhouses were usually separate to facilities, but off times like this one, there was a two-story building, and the lower half was the uh, mess hall, which was a long table. Each man apparently had his own individual spot uh, to sit, and if uh, somebody sat in the wrong spot, uh, he was obviously not so politely asked to leave uh, the rightful owner's spot. Meals were usually very plain, uh, but plentiful, and uh, breakfast consisted of... Um, Breakfast was at 5.30, consisted of hot biscuits, steaks, eggs, fried potatoes, oatmeal, cakes, donuts, prunes, or other fruit, and coffee. Meals were substantial to satisfy prodigious appetites. We're at the other end of the mess hall, and the mess hall then would obviously, uh, the, the food would have been served on this table here, served directly from the, of course, the kitchen. This is the kitchen. The kitchen uh, would have been obviously staffed by a cook, and the cook's helper was known as Cookie. And we leave the kitchen and go outside. And we can see we here's the building in which housed the bunkhouse and the kitchen and mess hall, two-story building. And we're going to head just outside of the bunkhouse uh, was the laundry. Each man was responsible for cleaning his own clothes. Probably an outdoor facility with just water in it and they beat a rock again beat it beat the close against a rock. Sleeping quarters were single bunks made of lumber nailed to uprights located around the sides and ends of the room. Straw filled mattresses and warm woolen blankets without sheets were used. Woolen socks, pants and shirts were hung on lines near a wood stove to dry. And in winter clothes and bodies were infrequently washed, not very often washed. And of course, the stench of steaming clothes added to body odors is left to your imagination. So the backs of the buildings shows you the rough cut buildings that the men would have lived and worked in. Hello everyone, there's a building which has housed, there's one everywhere that you go, regardless of whether it's a uh, lumber mill museum or whatever, wherever you go. But there's always a structure called the keep out room. We have just left the kitchen area again and we're walking to the sawmill and we should be walking along the sawmill path which obviously is covered by what is it? You guessed it, sawdust. And we'll take a look down the embankment and walk down the stairs to get to the sawmill. Now, each uh, sawmill would have been placed where strategically placed near a river or fast str uh, flowing stream so that they could have used the water to help uh, generate the, the energy to cut the, the lumber. And we can see here that lumber is floating in the pond after it was cut. We're walking down to the sawmill usually located next to where the lumber was assembled for um, carrying it downstream was a sawmill. It became economic, more economic to cut the boards here uh, so they could ship more downstream and uh, in the uh, on the trains. So uh, it was a good idea economically to put a sawmill uh, 
up here rather than having it sawmill downstream or uh, at another terminus. You can see the huge saw that was used. That saw is probably has a diameter of about three feet, maybe four foot. And in the late, um, I'm sorry, the early 1900s, it would have been steam powered. Steam would have been generated by a boiler. Okay, here we can see some of the rough cut pieces that are uh, just been milled. One just coming off the rollers. Would have been then loaded onto carts. And then the carts hauled outside. And probably stacked for drying. This is an example of some of the wood that they have on hand. You can see the waste product also down here, bark, which shows kind of the underneath portion of the sawmill. Shows some of the machinery and the belts that drive the mill. And the first thing you notice when you come down here is the fragrance of wood, fresh cut wood. It smells delicious. One of the more important jobs in a lumber mill would be the saw filer. Each man was responsible for keeping his own axe sharpened, but the saw filer was hired at $2 a day to sharpen cross-cut saws that were owned by the mill. And he would have sharpened up to 12 a day and was a very, very important part of the um, lumber mill because keeping a sharp saw makes the job go a lot easier and quicker, earning the company more money. The blacksmith would have also been part, an important part of the lumber mill back in the 1800s and early 1900s because he would have made a lot of the um, chains and hooks used to haul lumber around. This is um, an exhibit of the Shea locomotive built by Lima Locomotive Works in 1912. And Nice looking engine built in the beginning of the century. Used obviously to haul lumber from Gelton and the local community. A coal car, which would have been placed behind, uh, attached to the main locomotive. See, so this is a log loader. See the large crane? In front of it, which would have been used, put alongside of, or have been on the railroad itself, been on a car, and used to haul up lumber from awaiting uh, cars, etc. In the early days of um, before the railroads came in, the lumber industry would have used lots of horses and animals to uh, haul their wagons. Don't know if they would have used mules or horses. But these are the stables in which they would have been kept. Here's an exhibit of some of the horse-drawn. It's like a winter wagon. I would imagine you would have been able to load lumber on the back of it and haul it out in the snow. There's another example of a winter wagon which would have been hauled by horses, pulled by horses, more of a flat one. And these are the kinds of logs which would have been hauled now, when they cut these logs down, on the end of each each end of the log, they marked um, the lumber mill to which the log belonged. Each year, annually, they have a bark peelers convention. Basically, as a gathering in the uh, in August of uh, lumberjacks, etc., and they come in and have a little contest and uh, bark peeling as well as sawing and all sorts of contests. Uh, looks like log pulling contests and whatnot. In fact, it is July 3rd and 4th this year.